Creating a D&D character can be one of the most fun parts of the hobby. You get to let your imagination run wild and create this persona that you're going to be playing and slaying dragons with and rescuing knights and all sorts of good stuff. But it can also be pretty confusing. There's a lot of rules, there's a lot of terms that you might not understand, especially if you're a new player or a new dungeon master. I mean, what are ability score modifiers? How do you work them out? What are proficiencies? How do backgrounds play into it? What's, uh, you know, what's a class feature? All of these kind of things can lead people to worry about making that first character. And one of the most requested things I've had both on social media and here in the channel comments as well is can you do a video on how to create a character? So though, that's exactly what we're going to do today. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your first Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition character. Now before we begin talking about the actual hard mechanics of creating a character, you should probably have a read through the player's handbook just to see what kind of options are available to you, particularly when it comes to race and class. Also, speak with your dungeon master. They might have custom rules for their homebrew world. Maybe X race doesn't exist. Maybe they've made their own classes or their own races, which might pike your interest. Once you've kind of got a vague idea, you need to start thinking about just a rough layout of who this character is. You don't need to get specific at this point. You don't need to know if they're a wood elf or if they're a hill dwarf. You just need to know roughly who they are and what their story is. Maybe you want to be a thieves guild master who's been betrayed and is now looking for revenge. Maybe you want to be somebody who's lost their faith in the gods and is on a pilgrimage to rediscover that faith. Maybe you want to play a princess who's lost her kingdom to some evil force and is now looking for allies to help her reclaim it. These are all vague ideas, but they'll help you later on when you come to put those mechanics into play on the character sheet. Okay, so let's get started. You're going to need a couple of things to start with. Uh, first of all, I would highly recommend you get the player's handbook. This is the kind of core player book. It covers all the rules and how to play, but it also has all of the races and classes as options for people to make characters from. You can use the basic rules, which are for free on the Wizards website, but they come with a very limited selection of races and classes. Um, I would personally highly recommend you grab yourself a player's handbook. It also has all the rules for character creation right at the start, it's the first chapter. So if there's anything you're a bit confused about from this video, you can refer to here in the PHB. You're also gonna need character sheets. Now, I downloaded mine from the Wizards website. You get a zip folder, it's completely free. Um, I downloaded this one. This is the three page complete, and it's the one that I personally recommend. Uh, there is also form fillable versions of the PDFs as well, if you're playing online, or if you wanna have it on your iPad or your phone or something like that. You're also gonna need a pencil, if you're using a printed out character sheet, of course, a rubber or a razor, depending on where you're from, uh, just in case you make any mistakes. You're also gonna potentially need four six sided dice or D6, and then somewhere to roll it, I'm being fancy and using my Wormwood Gaming Dice Tray here. Once you've got all that stuff, you're pretty much good to go. And the first thing we're going to do is generate our ability scores. What are ability scores and why are they important? I'm glad you asked. Ability scores are kind of one of the core mechanics of the game. They really govern everything that you can do and what you can do well and what you can't. There's six of them. Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom and Charisma. These things determine your physical, mental, and social skills, what you're good at, what you're not, etc., etc., and they really do form everything. I'll run through them very quickly. Strength's an obvious one. It determines how good you are at running, jumping, climbing trees, and punching stuff in the face. Dexterity is all about agility and grace, how, uh, well, how well you balance on stuff, how well you pick a pocket, how well you sneak through a corridor. Constitution is more about your health, your threshold to pain, how strong a stomach you have, how well you resist poisons, and it also determines hit points. Intelligence is all about recalling information. If you're very learned and educated and have a lot of law, you would have a high intelligence. So somebody who knows a lot of book stuff is very smart. Book smarts is intelligence based. Wisdom, on the other hand, is more about perception, uh, being aware of your surroundings, spotting things, reading body language, but it's also a little bit of common sense. Being able to follow a, a track through the woods is more about wisdom than it is about intelligence. Likewise, knowing what mushrooms you can eat in a, in a forest that are, are poisonous could be a wisdom thing, 
as well as an intelligence thing. Finally, charisma. And this is one few people get wrong. A lot of people think it's about physical appearance and attractiveness, which isn't the case. It's actually more about self-confidence and how well you portray yourself, um, and also just your force of personality. A big hulking brute covered in scars who is very sure of himself can be just as charismatic as a bard. They just portray it in a different way. That's somebody who can intimidate with just a look, or they can, you know, put it on and show that they're a nice person as well. Somebody who gets up on stage and speaks in front of a large crowd, that's good charisma. Somebody who's shy, who doesn't like the limelight, who finds it difficult to speak to people, that's a low charisma character. Now, each of these abilities is going to be given a score or number. That's why they're called ability scores. That number will determine if your character is good at something or bad at something. The easiest way to think about this is think of the score of 10 is your average. It's neither good nor bad. Your average Joe citizen has a number 10 in each of these six things. Any numbers above 10 mean you are much better at that specific thing than your average Joe. And any numbers below 10 mean that you are worse. How do you get these numbers? Well, you're going to take your four six-sided dice, roll them, and then you take away the lowest one. If you've tied for the lowest ones, you simply choose one of them to remove, and you add up the remaining three. That gives you one of the numbers. You do that another five times, so you have a total of six. And then you'll later assign each of these to one of these ability scores to represent what your character is good at and what they are not good at. Now, if you happen to roll very badly, that is lots of numbers under 10, don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, the other thing as well is if you just want to get into the action, you don't want to roll stats, you just want to make a quick character, you can use something called the standard array. The standard array is just given set numbers you can use in place of rolling, and that gives you a 15, a 14, a 13, a 12, a 10, and an 8. This means that you can assign those however you like, and you're probably wondering, well Mark, if 10's the average, why would I ever want anything to go below 10? That doesn't make sense. Well, you're right in a way. Yes, it means that you have a penalty in that particular area. But flaws and not being good at stuff is what makes D&D fun. Playing a character who is a bit nearsighted or just completely oblivious and doesn't realise when somebody wants them to go away or is being rude to them. That can be really fun to do. So giving a character a low wisdom score is a way to represent that and to say, well, I'm sorry, I've got a low wisdom, you know, da, 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 that, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So it's all about playing to those flaws. And that's why you having that core character concept about their personality and their history, is kind of important because it means that it will dictate where you put your high numbers and where you put your low numbers. We'll talk a bit more about this and the ability modifiers, which is actually what you use to work out your skill bonuses and attacks and things like that later on. But I want you to have an idea of what each of these abilities mean and how they work so you can think about them for your character. So now you've got your ability scores, it's time to get started. And the first thing we do is choose your race. Now, I'm only going to be talking about the races from the player's handbook in this video. There are other races available to you, and they come in supplemental books such as Volo's Guide to Monsters, the player, uh, Elemental Evil Player's Companion, etc. But I'm not going to talk about those. If none of the races in the player's handbook interest you, Talk to your dungeon master, see if you can check out some of these other books or some things that are on uh, homebrew websites, etc. But it is up to your dungeon master. They want to make sure it's fair and balanced and that fits into their world. But we're just going to talk about the player's handbook races for now. Now, there's a number of choices. You have dwarves, elves, halflings, humans, half orcs, half elves, dragonborn, tiefling, and gnomes. I'm not going to go into detail on each one and what they all are and what their special abilities etc are. You can read all about that in the player's handbook, but just go through and pick one that suits your core character concept. Make a note of which one you want to pick, and then also check and see if they have a sub-race. Some races, such as elves and dwarves and halflings, have what's called a sub-race, and this is a variant on that racial type. So, elves for example, you have high elves, wood elves, and drow or dark elves. You pick one of those, again, choosing the one that makes the most sense for your core character concept or whichever one interests you. Um, and then you're gonna make a note of all of the traits and abilities 
that that race and sub race gains. Some of these will be little flavor things like, you know, what ages that they can be or what languages they speak. But some of them will be mechanical in-game abilities. Some of them will have spells that they can cast. Some of, them, some of them gain certain skills as well. Just make a note of these for now. You don't need to put them on your character sheet. You can probably put them on a spare piece of paper. Just make a note of them for now and we'll put them into the character sheet a bit later on. Once you've picked your race, it's time to think about your class. Now, a class is really what you've become as an adventurer. Your core character concept, you should really think about that character's history, who they were, why they've decided to take up a life of adventure, but your class determines that path that they're gonna take. It's what you're gonna level up in, you're gonna unlock more abilities as you gain experience points, you're gonna get to pick specializations that let you kind of have specific roles and abilities and things that you can do that differentiate you from other similar classes. Um, and it's, you know, it kind of, it's your career as an adventurer. So think about it as your core character concept is what you were, your class is what you've become um, in order to fulfill whatever goal or mission or objective that you've set as part of that core character concept. Classes come in a variety of options. I'm gonna to have to read these off a list because I'm never gonna remember off the top of my head. But you basically have Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Warlock, Sorcerer, and Wizard. If you wanna read more about what each of those are and what they mean, do check it out in the Player's Handbook. I'm not gonna go through them individually. Once you had a read through, pick which one you want and then don't make a note just yet. We're actually gonna fill this in as we go when we start filling in our character sheet. However, it's important to have a read through of the class, have an understanding of what specializations you get to unlock, make sure that those are gonna match up with you know, the character concept that you've got in mind. Think about things like, you know, have a read through of the abilities just so you've got a good understanding of them. And then we're gonna start filling in the actual abilities and the things that you unlock as we go. That's it for part one guys, do check out the next video where we're going to start filling in our character sheet, assigning ability scores, talking about ability score modifiers, as well as working out our hit points. I hope you're enjoying this series, uh, do make sure you're subscribed so you get updated when the next parts of the video come out, check out the playlist for more videos, and yeah, I hope this has been helpful, thanks very much for watching and I will see you momentarily in part two.